Well, John, thank you so much for um, agreeing to have this uh, chat with me. Um, uh, I know you're a highly experienced um, educator and you've also got a tremendous amount of uh, experience in public speaking and, and, and um, speech making in general. So uh, it's going to be you know, fun to have a, a chat with you across the board um, in, a, in a very kind of, as I say, um, simple and open hearted way. Um, and maybe you could first off just start by telling us a bit about your background, your experience as an educator and in, in teaching uh, speech making and so on, and just give us a feel for, you know, your experience generally. Sure. Okay. So, um, it, you're right. It says my internet connection is a bit unstable, but I hope that doesn't hurt. So I started um, actually in journalism and a long time ago in, you know, that's what I studied. I did very little writing. I went right into education uh, with a master's in education uh, and literature. So I did a, a dual master's program in the US at Syracuse University. And um, yeah, my first 10 years, I worked in what, what they called urban schools, inner city schools, or in the urban schools. And it, every, you know, um, in the urban schools, you, you had to really pay attention to language if you wanted to, stories, um, literature. You know, you had to choose the right stories to bring students you know, into that realm uh, and make and have them and hope, you know, hopefully then have them care about it. So I've been teaching since 80, since 1980. So yes, I've been at it a long time. I spent 10 years in the States and then uh, teaching English literature and, oh, you know, messing around with drama. And then I, I showed up here in Florence and took a job here at the International School. And so my career has been just that, teaching um, English Lit, uh, you know, everything that goes along with it, poetry, public speaking. And um, it's at one point, I, I did dabble back into journalism as a columnist for an, a, a magazine that covered Italian soccer uh, in England called Football Italia, Calcio Italia. So, I went around interviewing, you know, players and coaches in City A. So that was okay. It was fun, but um, over the last six or seven years, I got involved in uh, television, um, a, a film that was a an international uh, Germans, Italians, and Canadians uh, part live action, part CGI, and I was the dialogue coach. So, and and that uh, called Mia and Me. And, and so always involved in, you know, these kinds of fun, you know, if it isn't fun, really, I don't know. I don't think I could do it. So um, about six years ago, I, I, I got involved in TEDx Youth uh, okay. through a student, actually. A okay. student wanted to bring TEDx Youth into the school. He went off and got a license. He attended an event. And, of course, the license doesn't follow. So I, I started preparing. He asked me to be the advisor. I then went off to Brooklyn in, uh, to a TEDx event and got the license so that we could, uh, my students could, could uh, perform, uh, present in front of more than 100 people. So now I have, you know, I, I started that. And then, um, you know, training students, well, it went along with the English, really, uh, public uh, uh, speaking, you know, the, the manuscript speech, the, the, you know, off the cuff, you know, ability to comment on text, uh, to stand in front of the group. And, and then TEDx, you know, with TEDx, it got a lot more serious, um, you know, with a lot of different rules and so on and proper speech making speeches of between, oh, anywhere from five to 12 minutes, for the younger right. students, students in high school, adults would come in and speak. Uh, yeah, so, and then World Speech Day, uh, um, you know, I was invited by, by uh, Leila Bedzi, who was, had organized a World Speech Day in Florence, 
she saw our, I think she saw our stuff on online on YouTube with TEDx Youth, invited um, us down. And so I immediately got the, we only had a few weeks to prepare. So, you know, ideally need much more time. So now, you know, the students are, well, they're really sold on this. You know, they, they enjoy it. They have something to say, yeah. small children. Um, but yeah, so middle school, high school, and, and that's where we are now. Uh, we're just now, you know, I have a student who's helping me organize. Uh, another student is with a, um, a teacher who is doing a video club. So it's, you know, it, it really encompasses much of, you know, a, a larger part of the school. It isn't just me and, um, you know, the few students. Um, yeah, so um, that, that's, that's, you know, where I started and where I am now. Okay, okay. Well, we maybe circle back to uh, talking about public speaking and speech making in a moment, but I'm really interested what you were talking about with, with involving students in the actual kind of um, preparation and organization of <clears throat> World Speech Day events, uh, because um, Really, at the heart of World Speech Day is this kind of notion of of um, involving others and also kind of devolving everything. Uh, so uh, there's no central kind of hub, if you like, but 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 um, organizers are responsible for their own events and and so on. So there's that sense of devolved activity, and it seems like that you've been able to kind of instill that into your own activities at the school so i'd be fascinated to to hear how that's worked and what people get out of it both in public speaking terms and also organization terms have you found people kind of come forward and and and, and want to get involved is that is that how it's worked well they do yes they you know the 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 older students of course are and look let's let's be let's be frank and honest um the older students are always looking for um let's say something to add to their college application yeah you know they're 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 motivated and they really are motivated now that's not to say that they aren't genuinely interested because they are um they you know i think that uh, first and foremost when the leaders or let's say the teachers are passionate about the subject matter about um an event or you know we had a whole bunch of students show up for example to a blm a black lives a black lives matter protest here in florence yeah they they want to be a part of those uh initiatives that mean something and it means something to them okay and sure, they are obviously they they are they are thinking you know ahead. Okay, I'm in the International School of Florence, and and we're not a big school, but um, the this you know it's it, well five or six hundred. Okay, five hundred fifty students from K through twelve. We have a, you know I'm I'm always I've you know I've never changed my my. Um, my view or my, my, the way I have seen the students there, there, we have so many nice kids. And I think that's true everywhere. Yeah. I think what happens is that, you know, if you really care about, you know, what you're doing in my case, literature or theater arts, um, that, you know, the world speech day TEDx, um, you have to be able to transmit that to them, you know, in terms of what that, you know, what is it? kids ask, you know, students ask, well, well, what exactly is, what do I have to do? Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not good at this. I, you know, I, I can't speak in front of a crowd. And I always say, well, the shyest, uh, you know, the shyest people sometimes and often make the best actors, the best speakers. If you have something you're passionate about, you know, we can find a way to link it to the theme. Yeah. So they do come uh, to answer the initial, original question. Uh, you know, Students, I, I also do the, I, I'm the advisor for the, uh, the student newspaper, which is called the Tuscan Times. And I let the students, you give them responsibility and they're happy to take it. Yeah. So the, so the, the, the students, you know, they interview 
the, the outgoing editors, editor in chief and the assistant editor interview the students who are interested, they know each other best. So okay. we like to, let's say, to use a cliche, put the ball in their, you know, in their hands and say, look, you know, I sit back and I try not to get too excited and, you know, jump in and tell them what my ideas are. Um, but they run the meetings for Tuscan Times, for TAD, they, they did it all. And for World Speech Day now, this is the first time I've asked a really enthusiastic young lady if she would be my organizer. And then she asked, she said, well, I have a friend who would like to get involved and a stu another student I have in class. And she, yeah. you know, what could she do? I said, well, how about she work with the video club so that this can be done as professionally as possible? So they are, you know, genuinely in, uh, enthusiastic about that. Some of these kids, they don't even think about their college applications. Yeah. They just want to be a part of some kind of initiative that means they're making, you know, you know, making, uh, helping uh, someone change an idea, um, yeah. you know, to making the world a better place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and what, what sort of... Um... Are the kind of ground rules? What are the basics of in terms of skills that you're able to give to uh, students when they're sort of starting out, either with TEDx or with a World Speech Day event, in terms of of, of presenting themselves? Um, it, yes. Well, well, I think the first, you know, the way I begin, I of course, you know, like most English teachers, you know, we have a fairly lengthy unit uh, with speech, uh, with public speaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one of the, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, not this past year. Well, actually, I did even in lockdown um, the last two or three years, my my nines and tens, which is high school, uh, they their final exam was a speech, an argumentative wow. speech. Wow. And, you know, they uh, you know, they they had to prepare, of course, a on a topic, you know, there was a topic and there in one year you know so there was a pro and con okay and two students got the same topic but had to approach it from of course you know um, different perspectives um, but yeah so normally we begin with a topic and we try to find a topic that if they don't know about it they they really want to know about it and they have a need to know about it and so they'll they'll do the They'll, they'll do the, the footwork, you know, the, the research and so on. So we, we try to create, you know, so what is your topic and what is your core message? First, I like to, you know, take it from, so what are you, what do you want to say and how are you going to say it? Um, you know, so we really begin with, with the, the rhetoric with writing and, you know, everything that involves writing, whether it be a two minute speech or a five minute speech or a 15 minute speech. Okay. So really it's, it's, you know, let's, let's put this down on paper. Let's organize it. Let's look at the different, um, say, let's say the, um, the rhetorical devices that they, that, you know, they're able to use. Um, and then, you know, only after in the unit itself, it, it's a little bit different when I actually do the unit. But we, you know, we do then get into the, the physical delivery of, you know, the, of whatever their, their topic is their speech. So it does begin with very much with the, with the actual message, the core message, and trying to get, you know, trying to get that organized. And then, you know, we think about the language, they're going to be using the words, the actual words, um, you know. Of course, you know, the physical, the gestures, um, the, the way that the pauses, um, you know, the tone, tone, if you look into public speaking, tone seems to have a greater effect on the listener than, than the words themselves. Yeah. So, you know, that, you know, training them to actually be able to stand up and use their bodies their you know with posture um and eye contact and not just eye contact but how they can speak with their eyes when trying to make a connection with the audience of course with world speech day 
um, the audience becomes, a, well, the audience is, uh, let's say, anyone. Yeah. And anyone who happens to, you know, say, well, you know, let me see what these children, have. you know, they, they'll speak on a variety of topics. So they'll get, you know, well, we had a girl speak, a fifth grader, so an 11 year old, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Taya, and she, she was fantastic, you know. So, of course, uh, but she didn't speak necessarily, she wasn't speaking necessarily to just, uh, you know, kids her age. She was really speaking to anyone who could identify with, who could relate somehow to her topic. And that was, I think, if I, if I remember correctly, just how fortunate so many of us are. Right. You know, yeah. Okay, so the, the topic, I was going to ask you about, about topics and what, what they kind of tend to, students tend to respond to best in terms of, I mean, are, are, they, are they topics which are kind of, in a sense, social, um, that, that, that revolve around one's relationship with community, uh, or, or with the environment, or the big themes. I mean, is there, are those uh, kind of what you find people want to get engaged in and want to talk about? Uh, are you are you there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So first, you know, they 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 really want to know how to connect to the theme. Okay. And which is what, and so once they do that. Um, for example, um, uh, a couple of young ladies came up to me the other day and said, okay, so um, humanity at a crossroads. And we spoke about that briefly. And, you know, uh, 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 two girls, you know, these two um, ninth graders, so 15 year olds said, look, we, we discovered that our grandmothers experienced the same thing, the second world war. And they had a similar experience. They don't know each other, but they both wrote their experiences down. One wrote it down in after, much after the war. And the other one kept a journal. Can we talk about our grandmothers? I said, how many grandmothers uh, do you think are out there? How many grandfathers that have had that same experience? Um, I think that's relatable. I, I think that yes, but you know, now the hard part it really comes. So the topic, you know, they, they look at, you know, TEDx doesn't um, necessarily say you have to have a theme. Yeah. Okay. So, but we, we, I tend to work with theme so I can give the students a starting place. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, they tend to be all over the place. Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, I like them to I've travel in, in, in that theme. Carry on, yeah, sure, sure. Pardon me. No, I was saying I've hesitated sometimes to to set a theme, but I think I think generally people find it a good place to start with, even if they, you know, they end up by branching off and doing something different. At least it's got them thinking along a particular route, and and that you know gets gets it all started. Well, you know, of course, as you know, what happened when you provided. Um, me with um, the email of a, a headmistress in a, a director in Argentina, yeah. in Buenos Aires, St. Nicholas College, uh, and, and uh, Valeria uh, Carula, uh, Car I think that's how you pronounce her last name, I'm not yeah, sure, yeah, she was yeah, yeah. fantastic. You know, we, we put the, you know, we, she said, okay, so what's the idea? I thought, I don't know, I thought maybe, you know, we, we could pair up students, they're, they're all in lockdown. And these students took the, the theme, and you know they um, they worked it out. They were all older kids, um, but they did work it out, and they they co-wrote. And then, as you know, of course, they co-delivered. Um, it, it, the younger children, you know, they they need a little bit more assistance with, say, focusing, because sure, you know, there's the 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 focus is really important, so that you know I, I always ask them, you know, what Look, can you write down your core message in a sentence or two? Yeah. What did you want the, you know, the, the, those people out there that, and you don't know them. You know, when we, when we did a world speech day in Florence twice, we had an audience. Yeah. And that was wonderful. 
you know, it, there's something about young people going up to a podium, um, you know, going up on a stage and, and speaking in front of a group. It does wonders for them. Yeah. But, um, you know, when, when, uh, when and we did that with TEDx in front of 250 people. So I listen to them. You know, I just say, OK, so, you know, shoot, what, what, what kind of ideas do you have? And then, you know, there, there's always an idea we can work with. You know, once the, they, they get their focus, then I think I can help them organize, you know, to make sure there's a, you know, there's a flow of ideas and it isn't just random. Yeah. And I think that's that's fantastic advice that, you know, to ask them to put down their their proposal in, in one or two sentence maximum. I mean, I, that's, you know, in a sense, the key to all um, professional writing. You know, if you're writing a, a feature film script, that's really the test of can you put that down in one in one sentence and will that be persuasive? So it's I think it's a it's a wonderful discipline to have and to give people, as you say, that sense of focus, which I haven't heard I haven't heard talked about in that way before. But I think it's a great word. It's in a great way to describe what you have to have within the speech, how, however informal, to get it to be persuasive, which is that you know that sense of focus. Yeah. You know, that, that's where that's where the um, modes of persuasion, you know, when we do the unit, of course, we get into the uh, ethos, logos and pathos of it. And and also, you know, Cicero's um, uh, Cicero's five. Oh, what did I? Um, you know, Cicero had basically five five rules that for him, you know, this is what speech was, the, the canons of rhetoric. Right. So invention, arrangement, uh, style, memory, and delivery. Right. Um, okay. I think that probably, you know, you have to talk about, you have to talk about, um, you know, the, the importance of not so much memorizing. I, I, I really don't want students memorizing. I want them rehearsing and practicing. So okay. they can really, you know, you know, so when they go to sleep at night, it, you know, it goes into their long term memory. Um, you know, there's no cramming a speech. There's there's you know, there's no uh, let me try to memorize this overnight. Yeah, um, yeah. With World Speech Day, most of the students who got up spoke from um, a piece of paper. OK, you know, students from other schools. But with TEDx, you know, they're able to they, they really well, they, they had a lot longer to prepare. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, uh, you know, I had a club at school and I do now. I, I did start a club, um, a public, um, a World Speech Day TEDx Speakers Club. Okay. So, you know, for students to come after school on Thursday so I can help them prepare, they're doing all the writing. Uh, you know, so they do, you know, it, it, it really helps to, because we do have students at school now, 50% of our students, okay. all middle schoolers, 50% of the high schoolers, but we can also do that online. It's not, it isn't difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, they need to, they need, you know, first and foremost to, you know, what is that idea? Let's see if we can express that in a sentence uh, or two, and really in one uh, would, would be ideal. And then if, if that makes good sense, now we can, you know, start to, you know, work on this and, you know, how are we going, what are we going to do with this in terms of, is there going to be an anecdote or two, a story, you know, is there a strong, you know, I always tell them strong beginning and strong finish. Yeah. Because that's what people remember. That's what they remember. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, apart from the sort of the fun of doing it, do you think that you're, and I hope this isn't a leading question, but I'm interested. The, your students who've either done TEDx or World Speech Day or whatever, you know, do they get something out of it? By that I mean, you know, a slightly different, a bit of rewiring, if you like. Um, oh, I, yeah. Um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm interested because of what I see is the kind of, the strange impact of public speaking on one's pattern of thought and outlook. Uh, you know, I, I think that the, the, the quick answer is yes, absolutely. And, you know, I guess then you would say, well, how do you know? You know, if it isn't, um, 
because it really for the especially you know younger kids older kids alike when you know how often do adults ask children you know what their opinion is on something you know we do it in school because you know the italians call it interrogazione interrogation and that sounds you know that sounds a little bit like well uh someone committed a crime and now we're interrogating them yeah, yeah. i do like the word though you know because yeah. it, 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 it you know we're gonna ask questions and now it's you know go ahead you know let's in, in english of course english literature french literature italian literature we're analyzing literature we're critiquing you know poems uh poems stories etc but they have something to say and when they can say it yeah and, and you know they do want you know i think more than anything else it really helps their self-esteem i've i've seen kids shine after delivering a talk um and it happens with the newspaper you know when they when they write their stories uh, a student a couple of students paired up on a story two issues ago and they came up to me their eyes were like saucers we got 540 reads yeah. And I said, you see what happens when you put an article on that cover um, that people are interested in and, and people are reading what, you know, what you wrote. The editors felt good. They said, our and so now the, the paper is, you know, moving to have its own website because they want to, you know, and this is all because, you know, they feel so good about, you know, what they've accomplished with, with the speeches. Oh, gosh, after the World Speech Day down at the... Um, at the ex prison in Florence, there's an old ex prison down there. Yeah. Um, Let Le Morate, it's called. And, you know, the students, I asked a girl, an 11 year old, they said, Would you like to stand up there with your older brother? He's, he's uh, you know, 16, you're 11, you know, you'll feel more confident. She just shook her head, No. She said, No, I, I can do it. And I looked at her mother and I said, she, And her mother said, Ask her. Um, you know, so, you know, they, the girl got, a, she got an applause. And the other day I saw her in the hall with a friend. And they're in the, okay, sure, it helps. They're in my drama class. But I said, hey, girls, come here. I want to talk to you. How would you two like to do it? You know, I said, Taya did a, has already done a world speech day speech. How would you like, to, how, how would you two like to pair up? Maybe head to some, you know, really nice place in Florence. And mm -hmm. their, their eyes lit up. Um, you know, what, when they, after they're, after they've done it, you know, they worry about it. It adds a certain amount of stress. You know, will, will I write something that's good? I'm not going to write it for them. I can give them advice. And when I finally stand up, you know, now the public is a little bit different here. So, it, you know, standing up in front of a hundred, 150 people, 250 people live, of yeah. course, you know, is a little bit more difficult. But still, uh, you know, you're going to uh, record something and it's going to go out to a much larger audience. Yeah. So, you know, you know, again, how do you feel about yourself? You know, how do you feel? How, 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 what's that doing for your self-esteem? Um, you know, I find that even when they've memorized, you know, re remembered, but not memorized it, but rehearsed it enough to really know I had a boy, Shimon, who for World Speech Day two years ago, and he was so convincing because he really wanted to pass that message along. Right. No, it does a world of good for them, you yeah. know. And, and I think you know, it's 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 funny, it's interesting, not funny, how you can see that even on their faces. Yeah. You know, they will tell you if. Um, you know, send me the recording. I'll take a look at it. They'll tell me I don't like it. What can I do to improve this? I feel like you know, there's there's too much white, a dead you know, dead space. Um, I don't know if I used the best language possible. You know, their it their their minds are really working. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested in the in the UK <clears throat> over the last few years a a a, a kind of a movement, if you call call it. A, around oracy about increasing the role of speaking and listening uh, in school, it has grown up. And I, I think it's an interesting um, kind of direction to try and give um, oracy the same kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> emphasis as numeracy and literacy that, you know, to kind of have a, a rounded 
um, education, the speaking and listening skills are fundamental and for many students will be, turn out to be rather more important than say literacy. I, I wondered whether you'd, you'd sort of, you feel that in, in your overall uh, activities as um, you know, the, the role of speaking and public speaking in the classroom and then generally at school. So I think that it's, in, for, for me, it's important. Um, it's, I think it's critical. I think that uh, the ORC, uh, I, I think it's critical because I have found, you know, I've been teaching, well, for, you know, 40 years, uh, really since 80. I did my master's program in 82, but I was already working in schools. Um, I, I think over the years, uh, sadly, and probably a good deal of it, uh, of that has to do with, uh, you know, social media and shorthand, pecking, um, you know, the different, you know, social media language, you know, and, and you know, so many characters and so on. Um, you know, there, I don't think, you know, I think that the listening, the listening, the skill of listening has greatly diminished. So, you know, we, in fact, reading, writing, listening, speaking um, were the four proper strands, you know, and, and that's what we were assessing in the long ago. And, and really we still are. So when, you know, so basically, you know, uh, ideally when we're in school, I've, we've done it online, it's better uh, in breaking students, for example, into small groups and having them, uh, you know, um, in, you know, in, interrogate each other, question each other, find the questions. You know, I look for in small group or even large group students. You know, are you listening? Are you able to take what this this you know your classmate said and apply that to your own sure. thinking? Um, what, whether you disagree with it or agree with it doesn't really matter. But can you apply it? Have you really taken it on? The RSC, I think, is, um, I, I think that if, if we don't pay more attention to it um, and, and, you know, the listening and speaking skills both, then more than likely they're, go they're going to have a very difficult time in, 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 in their working lives or, you know, in, in uni, at university, um, because they're not really training themselves, I, you know, at least I get that impression and um, having taught for a long time, you know, you, you know, obviously you have to work on that with them. You know, today we listen to, it's Martin Luther King's birthday today. So, you know, um, we listen to, um, um, you know, I've been to the mountain top, yeah. you know, part of that speech. We listen to a little bit of Malcolm, Right, Malcolm X um, on police brutality, and we listen to a couple of uh, you know academics speak about these two men, and you know I'll tell you, I I, I can tell you that uh, however many students were in there in the in the one classroom sixteen, they were riveted to that screen. Yeah. Okay, but that is only because well. Uh, Martin Luther, Reverend King was such a, you know, a, a powerful speaker, but, you know, not everyone's a powerful speaker. Your teacher is speaking in front of the, you know, in, in the group or giving instructions and simple instructions, you know, everything has to be written down today. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a pity really when we have to give it to them in writing on Google Classroom, um, on the, on the blackboard, on the whiteboard, and then, you know, have them write it down. You know, we have to give it to them in so many different ways. You know, wh when do the ears come into play? And, you know, I'm not asking them to remember, you know, every homework assignment wrote, but let's just talk about the conversation we're having, we're having, sorry, the conversation we're having. And, and um, you know, are we with each other? And are we really comprehending? Are we understanding? Can we come to some kind of an understanding? Yeah. And yeah. that doesn't happen without both parts, does it? The speaking yeah. part, of course, is even, well, you know, the comprehension, but, you know, in the listening, but also in the speaking with, you know, how, what kind of a vocabulary do I have at, 
you know, you know, sort of at my disposal. Yeah, you mentioned the, the, the Martin yeah. Luther King um, experience and Malcolm X, and yeah, and yes, I agree. They're both, you know, powerful speakers, Dr. King, primarily. But um, I'm, I was just reflecting then on a little video I was sent a couple of days ago by um, somebody from Malaysia um, who uh, was just for a minute talking about the experience of being blind um, and the effect that it had on his life. And, uh, and um, it was remarkably powerful. I think just because of his honesty and, and his sort of sense of connection. Um, so I, I don't think as wonderful as the great speeches are, I don't think you have to be an, an amazing speaker to have this connection, to have this, you know, there's, no. something, there's something magic in just giving a speech, some, something in that connection that can change people's minds. And if it's a great speech, it will still be doing so 50 years later, of course. But there was just in that experience I had of, of Stephen from Malaysia, um, how brilliantly persuasive that was. And I thought that's exactly why speech making is important because you don't have to be a savant. You don't have to be a magician with words in order for right. the magic to come out. And I'm sure you- Oh, you've I agree with you, I, uh, Simon. I think that we have the speech in the speaker. I'm sorry, I missed Pardon that. Me? I, I couldn't hear what you said then. I'm sorry. I, no, I, I agree with you. Oh, I just said I agree with you. You know, you have you have the speech and the speaker, and I think a a, a a speaker can take a relatively mundane topic and make it seem exciting. Yeah, <laughs> really. And uh, someone who isn't a very good speaker can take the most important subject and really kill it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, so often it's, um, there's something about uh, just look, we as listeners look beyond the words and we feel and identify with the person behind them, don't we? We, we sense when they're talking the truth or when they're oh, talking do. about something which is true, true of themselves. So I, I find that a fascinating thing that we, we, we well, you see, um, oh, it, uh, you um, this was a, a student or a, from Malaysia, a blind, a, a blind person, a person who was blind, yeah. sent a speech in. No, yeah. uh, a, a few years ago for TEDx Youth, uh, there was, there were a couple of a set of twins in the in the bill in the school, and um, one of the boys ended up with uh, cerebral palsy. Right, and. He walked out on that stage in front of 250 people. Great kid. He walked out on that stage and he said, you probably noticed I walk with uh, somewhat of a limp. And he did have some visual aids to show himself rowing on the Arno. You know, I was back in the audience looking around him and people weren't feeling sorry for him. They were celebrating his courage yeah. And I get goosebumps right now thinking about it. I really yeah. do. Yeah. He touched hearts and, you know, a boy 15, 16 years old, he touched hearts. People, you know, there were, there were tears flying. They, you know, they, they gave him a standing ovation. Um, yeah. He was just incredible. And, you know, he wasn't this powerful, you know, uh, professional speaker. He was someone who had something to say, a story to tell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we've had, had um, various contributors from the USA and there, there is an um, uh, association of handicapped people in the USA that contributes to World Speech Day. And I think, um, you know, there's so, so much more that we could be doing to encourage uh, them to take part and to, to, to feel part of a public speaking activity. Um, it, it seems, you know, a, a very kind of valid thing to be doing. Yeah, you know, uh, Simon, I think that one of the um, tasks is to draw those young people out who 
who really want to say something but are afraid. Yeah. You know, um, and 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 you know, often they're they're people with the best messages. Um, you know, I mean, if it, it, you know, not to get you know, I, you know, I don't know anything about medicine. I just know that from my reading that fear restricts the the blood vessels in the brain, and when kids get afraid, when any, I, I, there was a, a we had a head of a head of school, an academic dean. She could beat red in her neck every time she stood up to speak, but in in, in, in putting you know students uh, you know on the on the stage, let's say, you know putting the spotlight on them, um, young young people, um, you know they might if they, that's why they have to really rehearse and practice because if they really know and have it committed and are committed, um, otherwise you know the the, the, the the blood vessels restrict they 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 get afraid and they draw blanks. And they lose, you know, they lose their place. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't happen when they have the paper in front of them, of yeah. course. Yeah. But it, then, of course, they're not speaking with as much conviction. Um, but they are. They, they, I think that's 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 you know, somehow getting those people, you know, and we find it in classrooms all the time. You know, those students who sit back and are content not to say anything because they're afraid of how. It may come out if it, you know. Some I've had students say, "No, oh, I don't want to really say anything. I might sound stupid." Um, and often there, there, there are young people with such you know important messages. Yeah. And it's a world of good for the listener, for us, the audience, and for them. And what about World Speech Day 21, John? Um, humanity at Crossroads. What what can we look forward to in terms of? uh you, you know the, your international school's contribution what are the things that you think the the students are going to be talking about have you got a feel for things yet well i that you know i've given them a i've given them a um basic handout my or, the my organizing girl alicia and you know yeah, I, I, I saw the handout it's fantastic i loved it yeah 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 so they're now just you know basically you know things are fairly methodical i don't know the um the topics yet um those will come in over the next few days but i just heard that there are two 11 year olds who have something to say and want to broach the the theme um you know i knew that the the two students who had come up to me and said listen I, we want to talk about our grandmother's stories um someone said to me, someone had mentioned something to me about uh, oh social um you know how people can something to do with um connecting socially and not you know this thing not happening over internet somehow finding a way to connect socially you know they're they're missing that you know italy is a country where you know people miss the embrace the actual physical embrace. Yes, that's that's just a you know part of daily life, you know, an embrace and a kiss, you know, when you see good friends and so on. But they haven't come forward forward yet. We do have quite a few people, and including adults in the in the in the community who have um, actually said that they were interested in speaking. So oh, I yeah. said, yeah, you know, make sure you contact you know my my student organizer. And then, so what we'll do next is make sure that we don't have anyone who is going to speak on, let's say, the same topic. Okay. Okay. Well, John, thanks so if much. If you ask me that question, I think a week from now you'll know. What? I think if you ask me that in a week, then I'll have a much better idea of topics. We may have to help students sort of, you know, uh, sort of re reframe. Uh, sometimes they start with a question, but to to you know perhaps clarify that topic or you know narrow it down to something you know something a little bit more relatable you know something not so broad well I'm, someone I'm, else, I'm, someone wanted to talk about vaccines oh, someone right. said something about speaking about vaccines and the fact that poor countries are at such a loss you know you know uh, you know, the, 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 well, it, it just to say, hey, Mr. You know, Mr. P, what about you know how unfair the whole vaccine thing is? I said, well, what do you mean? Uh, and, and, and you know, she said, well, the vaccines are for rich countries. You know, poor countries, 
um, are going to, how are they going to get vaccines if these vaccines cost them? Who's going to cover their health care? Uh, people don't have access to health care. I said, well, it sounds like a good topic. Um, you know, let's, you know, so let's, let's yeah. get together and talk about that. So that, that, that I forgot about that idea. Yeah, lovely idea. Lovely. Well, John, thanks so much for sparing the time now. That's been a, you know, a great kind of tour d'horizon of, uh, of uh, what you're up to and uh, the, the speech making at your school. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing once again, you know, some very, very talented uh, speeches from some super talented students. So thanks very much indeed. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we're really so happy to be a part of it and in, in watching it grow has been, it's wonderful. You know, now I don't have to go out and look for students. They come looking, you know, I, I, I want to give a speech. <laughs>